I am here vibing with one of the living legends in Jamaica's entertainment industry. A saxophonist extraordinaire, an arranger, composer, producer, a man of many talents. His parents named him Dean Ivano Fraser, and today he shares his story. Sir Fraser, legend. Bless. Big man. Great. All is well, sir? Yeah, man. Everything is It's an honor. It's a joy. Give thanks. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! So far, I didn't talk to us though. Early life, place of birth. Well, me as well, them, you know, when old time people, them called born under the clock. Born under the clock. Yeah. yeah. So when a man, when the first time as a youth, when a man say, in born under the clock, it means, say, uh, Kingston. A Kingston, they've come mm -hmm. born and grow, you know? Yeah. Kingstonian by birth. Yep. Yeah, where in Kingston you grew up? Um, in a trench town. Trench town, mm. musical city. Yeah, man. But you're born in it for the praise of us. Yeah, um, how many brothers and sisters do? Yeah, well, until about seven years ago, I just had four brothers and one sister. But then my father, who did gone with my father, who was one of those. British, when, what do you call them? Um, wind. A uh, wind rush generation. Thank you. Mm. So, find my father forward a couple of years ago. And so, I ended up with about 10 brothers now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have about 10 brothers and I have about 4 or 5. Yeah, sisters. all your siblings are still alive? Yes. Yeah, man, it's a blessing that yeah, man give thanks, man. Yeah, man. Uh, mommy and daddy still around? Yeah, man. Yeah? No, no. My, oh. my, my father passed from father COVID passed in a December, God. I'm so sorry At to hear that, man. Yeah, man. Ja, ja, you yeah, was in Jamaica? Man. No, in Overseas, the United States. Overseas, in the UK. Than... UK. Ja, ja. Mummy is still around? Yeah, man. Mm. Mm. Mama She's doing fresh. And fresh. <laughs> We're glad to hear that. Yeah. Where did you attend school, though? I want to tell you, say, one night time, I country, I go to school, you know. Mm. Yeah, because I, I remember my auntie, who is, who is like my, my next mother. Oh, okay. So, so my aunt now, as a, she's a Myconian. Yeah, by myself, yeah. So she run go give back to her community. Her, her, her community. Oh. And she took me with her, you know. So in the sixties up in a place in a Clarendon named Coxon. Coxon. Me live and yeah. go school, Pinders Valley School. Pinders Valley. Now the early, early, early ages. And then, you know, after that I came back to Kingston, you know, with my parents mm -hmm. and thing. And that was a a nice vibe. So we come back and we live in the trench town there. And, you know, life start all life over. Life start all over again. Yeah, man. So, you attended with school in Kingston? Right, Charlie? Me, me attend, no, no, St. Peter Claver. So, oh, so you were still very young at the time when you came back then, man? Yeah, man. Okay. So, I did St. Peter Claver primary and then me attend Norman, man. Norman Manley, okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. And that was it for formal schooling? That was it for formal schooling, because yeah. at 15, I just stopped going to school. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when well, you stop go school, you know, I, you know when you start to learn music. And okay, okay. After you, you, you get a fine beat and for learn something, you know, extracurricular after school, mm. and you take it serious from this or so. Yes. Before we come to the part of the thing, let's go mm. further, Fraser. What was it like growing up from a financial perspective, though? Uh, we don't know nothing about finance. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most we can tell about finance is that at age 16, while I was playing in a band here in Kingston, I sent myself again to school and I did accounts. So nice. That, that was the only financial <laughs> runnings I really so It was rough growing up. Wicked, man. It... Whereas I got that it. Yeah, man, but never there. But, but, but no, nah, man, me have two, two, two mother, you know. Two mother, auntie, so. and yeah, and mother, and, yeah. and 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 of course, 
you know, auntie was very important. Yes. In in that. And she was a teacher, innit? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, my mother was a teacher yeah, too. My mother was a teacher as well. I'm an uncle teacher too. All of them. I had left school at 15, right? Mm -hmm. You can imagine that? <laughs> so yeah. can, can you imagine how them burn me out for it, you I know? can imagine. Yeah, because the whole of them are teacher, uncle teacher, and them are saying, and you know, them, they, they saw a lot of good things in me, you know. Oh, okay. You know, education wise. wise. And, mm. You know, they must say. So if say, I just drop it in, so. You know, say, me just want to play my hand, you know, and yeah. things. <laughs> and you know, time is so serious and crucial that, you know, needed for work, you know. Oh. And, 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 Help my mother with my next siblings, them and you know. You just have to take it, take care of it. Yeah, we have, you know, so me, yeah. I, me, I, me, I, me, I work and I learn upon the job. You understand what I <laughs> You said you left school when you were, right, stop going to school when you were 15, but at what age or stage were you, you, you first get that musical each day? 15. 15. Man. Yeah, man, when we going to the first band, me are 15 and it's a it's a famous band, it's Sonny Bradshaw. Sonny Bradshaw, seven. seven. And mm. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, here is where my attention span just stay so. You know, stay it so. was time to, I, to, to, to consume everything and soak up everything around me. But you never get any formal musical training before that, though? Um, well, formal, as in learning to play the instrument, and learning to read a little music. Oh, okay. But then, a couple years into being a member of Sonny Bradshaw 7, is when Melba Liston came to Jamaica. So I became a part of the Edna Manley. It was just called the Jamaica School of Music at that time. So. Yeah. And so I was a part of that. But then that never lasted very long because I was expelled from the school, you know? <laughs> How are you the part of Reza? But, you know, yeah. is, is, you know, when people, you have a little time when people think a certain way, you know, and, mm. and them things say, what them say is law, and them not look into your part of the deal, mm. you understand me? And so, because them have the, you know, the upper hand and, and the angle, they are able to say, well, yes, let's get rid of him. And, oh, okay. And, and, and it... That was know, that. I mean, it never take them more than three months to invite me back to school. Oh. And, and, you know, wanting me to be a, a honorary member of the school and all that. But I refused at that time. I never interested. <laughs> you understand me? Yeah. So, you know, I love... That never good still, we should not go back. <laughs> <laughs> At 15, you decide, well, you started to feel that some music in you, you want to get out. Yes. And you became a part of the Sonny Bradshaw 7. Oh, you end up there, so though? My teacher. My teacher was a player, one, one of the saxophonists for Sonny Bradshaw, mm -hmm. years before. So was that a brand? And Yeah, Baby Brian. Mm. And, and what happened was that... Um, the, the saxophonist at the time in Sonny's band, he was going to he was migrate. Great. Okay. And so Sonny told my teacher that he wanted a saxophone player, knowing that my teacher is a man who teach people. Right. So he tell him he want a saxophone player. He don't want anybody great. He want a player who is willing to learn. Mm. And um, of course I was tested you know, I had a period. Like the audition session. Yes. Mm. Him, 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 the audition never looked like an audition, but it was, and it was an exam also. Mm. So when I, I would go to Mr. Bradshaw's house, I should be there but like at 10 in the mornings. So that's where I sat and I tried to find my way through the folder, you know, and all these songs. So, but when Mr. Bradshaw get up like 7.30, my daddy already sit down. Hungry feet. Hungry feet. You understand what I say? So, when him, when him see that, I was consistent in all of that. Him just say, 
Yeah. Yeah, the man. Send him come. Mm. So, you know, when me do my first band performance in 1972, I never know. I mean, just. I just think that I should have it go home, but. Never good? Well, the thing is, well, well come on, my nerve wrecking. Nah, and, nah, nervous. And, and, and the musicians, you know, especially the other horn player who was playing with me, he was like a champion. He was tr okay. a trombone player named, named Joe. Um, and Joe was just. Joe McCarbuck. Joe was just excellent. And, you know, but you know, very helpful mm. to me. You know, and, you know, spur me on, and then you have a guitarist, my brethren. You know, rest in peace, Ox Brown. Ox Brown. Mm. Ox Brown, no, was my nemesis. <laughs> Give me a warm time, you know. But that also spurred me to, you know, motivation. Be, yeah. So mm. I was really, you know, motivated by him thinking that I don't know what I am doing, but you know. So but it helped me to jump over the wall. You yes, know? how you reach on a sax? Because you started out playing something different. I started out the playing clarinet, clarinet yeah, mm. but um, the clarinet was like, it's like a mother reed instrument, you know. Because, you know, we, kept, we call the saxes and the clarinet and all these instruments. Brass, what do we Reed. Reed, okay. Reed, reed. instruments. It, 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 it's the same brass, you know, but yeah. we call them reed and, and, and woodwind. Woodwind, right. So, playing a clarinet, you were able to do Anything. all of oh. those, any one of those instruments. Yes. You just apply yourself and you are there. So, why you move over from the clarinet to the sax? Um, well, one of me. When me are learning, you know, you know, you have man like Nambo Robinson, and then I'm, uh, I'm my best friend, you know. Yeah. Rest in peace, Nambo too. So when me, when me don't practice the band itself, cause we had a brass band, the band itself would rehearse. Mm. So and and we we did gigs. We played for golden ages and you know club people. You know, mostly old people we played for at the time. And um, there was a alto sax player. I, I remember him well, Albert. And Albert would have take up an instrument. And Albert was just, to me, fantastic. Yeah. Him just play. And I, I think I got a lot of my attitude from him. Yes. Because him just play. Him no care what. Him just, just play. play. Mm. And me did like that. And me I say, oh, me I play clarinet. And, you know, no girl now look at me I play that <laughs> instrument. <laughs> you know, so anyway, me just migrate to, to sax. sax. You understand yes. me? So, I mean, that was the start. That you was know? the start. Yeah. While in while in the, the Sunny Bradshaw seven now, mm -hmm. you were actually on the sax at that time now. Yeah man. I, but Learning I, as you go along. Yeah, I played tenor sax at that time. Though. Tenor sax, okay. Yes. So as as I grew more, you know, firm and 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 and, 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 and was able to, 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 to right, was, was able to you know, show my confidence now. Mm. I, there was another little saxophonist. He died too, unfortunately. Michael McLaughlin. See, McLaughlin is the great Bowie McLaughlin, keyboard player for Steve Marley, bigger brother. And he had, his father is also a great Jamaican saxophonist, flautist and trumpeter. Yeah. He named Carl McLaughlin too. And, so Mikey was able to have his own instrument because you know his father had it, right. multiple instruments. So Mikey would say, take the instrument, man, and I'm gonna play when you go at night time. So, you know, that's where I started to learn to control the right. instrument. Because the thing about these saxes, you know, is that although you can you'll be able to play all of them, the the the, the, the part that is most important is learning to control them and playing key. Mm. 
Mm. That's where you're, you're difficult to lie, yeah. you know? So I was able to do that and, you know, so with that, I, I was established as a reed player the instead reed of just player. being a, a, a tenor sax player, mm. you know? Back then, though, Sir Fraser, mm -hmm. most of the man them used to be one of the DJ and all of them something there. You know, the dance arts space well, was was there a a, a demand do for, for for people playing the saxophone back then? Well, back then it was a Jamaica at that time was a was a instrumental country. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I grew we grew that say. then. I grew we grew it out, and, okay. and I mean, unfortunately, you know, we don't really want to blame nobody still, but you know. We, we, the system, the educational system just don't cater it's for It's not conducive to. Mm. It's not cater for all these youngsters and things, you know. So, you know, we have to give thanks to Alpha and, and Stone Hill and, and Boys Club down in Montego Bay and them things. So they keep it Yeah, going. to this day where them people are still, you mm. know, still, still bring out young, young, young instrumentalists. You know, so so back in my day, you know, every youth tried to play, play something. Yeah, man. Mm. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, man. yeah, so I mean, as I say, every youth tried, you know, right. and, and and you wouldn't find a youth. I tried DJ in the 70s. Mm. A youth that tried to play, play something. I tried to sing a song. Mm. You know, so. So you never sing? No, well, I really did need to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I did, me did start make my way and oh, yeah, I used to sing one or two songs, you know, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I never really needed to, you know. Yes. So Sonny Bradshaw 7 now, that was your grooming years. That is when you get your thing together, you were learning the craft. Big school. Big, big school. school, yes. Yeah. How did that now lead to Dean Fraser becoming the Dean Fraser? Well, you, you know, you're there big school until all your teachers start leave you if you control the class, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, I remember Sonny Bradshaw, like, going on vacation and allowing me to lead, the, lead the band, you mm. know. Although I wasn't the most senior musician, you know. And um, so with that, I am learning now to, to be a band leader, so to speak. And, you know, I was able to pull that off. Mm -hmm. So as the years, you know, first six, seven years went by, I said to my virgin in other bands, say, you know, so I want to hear my instrument on the radio. Yeah? Yeah, man. And my friend said, well, you have to go start the studio. Mm. So I just get up one day and I just tell Mr. Bradshaw, I said, boy, I'm done, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? Yeah. And I said, I go to studio, Mr. B. I said, but you're going to studio? And you know, he would have wanted to say, so we you gonna get, you know, like he must say, we're gonna get money for, mm. for, 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 you know, because at that time, me all have to take care of my brother, them, you know. And he must say to me, say, oh, me, I'm gonna survive. And me, I said to him, say, me, no, know, you know, but yeah, a time for me move. So, on that note, I remember Namba wasn't in Jamaica at the time. Namba was in the States also. And then Namba just turned up on my yard one morning. And Namba just said, oh, which one you play now, man? And I said, well, I play for Sonny, but I tell him, I'm going to leave. So even though I tell him, I'm going to leave, I was still playing for him. Anyhow. OK, OK, OK. You know, but mm. not on a not on a band member level. level. Mm. So number say, come man, we are from a band here where we just want you come man. And so number came and go to Light Park. Light Park. <laughs> so I became a member of We the People. Mm. And um, 
with that situation there, you know, we, we, we start to engage in some studio run-ins. So even so though... You get it, where you want, you know, yeah, man. So even though it wasn't plenty, it was still something yes. that... So I was able to play for Joe Gibbs. I remember Errol Thompson, the mm, engineer from yes. Joe Gibbs, coming to the Sheraton, because I used to play at the Sheraton. You see, I, I, I was very fortunate in the later part of the 70s because, as I said to you, I was improving rapidly. Mm. And people like Jackie Jackson, who was the band leader for the Caribs at the time, said, when you're not working with Mr. Bradshaw on the weekend, come, me have a little space where you can get... Sheraton. Yes, up a Sheraton. And so that was something good for me. And then, Light parks and big band, yeah, and we, we started to really show how confident and how good we were as a as a um, we, we call it a backing band, backing but, band. But we were we were also the musicians who played in the studios, so we could reproduce anything because at, at, in those days, many of the songs that were recorded were recorded to live band. And we could, everything was live. And we, as I said, were able to reproduce anything. Bubbler was on keyboard, Bopi on guitar, Lydie on bass, um, <clears throat> David Richardson, um, Roddy Thomas, you know, and another horn player, Light Carr. He was on trombone, Chico Chin, Namba Robinson, and myself, you know. So we, we, we had a big sound and yes. we were very influential at that time. At that time. I, mean, we, I mean, we are influenced all the reggae band in England you know, mm. yeah, because we started to tour with Dennis Brown in the late 79. You guys were back in D. Brown yes. on the road. And when we went out there in England, it's pandemonium. Everybody started to say, no, 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 no. So something we want to do too. Mm. So Aswad and all them money, everybody went strong on brass and you understand me? So we dictated the pace at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the light box. That move was a stroke of genius. The right thing. The right move <laughs> at the right time. Yeah, mm. the right what was it like being on the road with D. Brown though, from a musical standpoint? It, um, that was incredible. I can't tell you that. It, 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 you have to realize, uh, you know, I mean, the average Jamaican man will say, yeah, D. Brown is the best singer, but him no know. Him no know. Because <laughs> D. Brown is the greatest thing. And when we... I, I, I realized that when we did any concert, if Bob Marley they in the area, Bob Ma, Marley Ma come come because D Brown was his the singer. Favorite. Yes. So D Brown was being called like the best baritone in music. You understand? Crown Prince. Yes, and 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 so. You know, what, what he did for, for, for the music was just superb, you understand me? Mm. It, is, it is interesting to hear a man who, have, who has worked with D. Brown and Bob Marley and the Wheel has said D. Brown are the greatest. Yes, as, as a voice. Voice. You understand me? As a voice. voice. Yeah. Mm. You also work with Bob and the Wheel as... Yeah. That was during the Light Parks days or... No man, during the Light Parks days, because Bob actually, the first time Bob linked me, you know, was about, could have been 78, 79, mm. you know. But he never linked me serious. He just said, uh, uh, yeah. Come true. like how you play, but 1980 you now. He said, I want you to be a whaler. So that is after I did the survival album mm. with, with him. He said, no man, you have to be a whaler, you know. And he just said, anytime you're ready. But you were on the road with D. Brown at the yeah, time. That is exactly what I told him. <laughs> yeah, but I look back on it and say... No, man, no, no regrets, bro. No that. regrets. No, man, I mean... Uh, after, after playing an, an, an album like 
survivors. Survivors. You know, you, you just say yes. Yes. Yeah, man. And then I come play from Peter Tash Peter. after that. And after he left. Yeah, man. Um, we yeah, me, me, do, me do one in album, Mama Africa, and me do um, Nuclear War. Yeah? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Apart from being on the road with D. Brown, did you work on any of his albums? Yeah, man. I worked, the first album was um, Vision. Vision. Yeah, I worked on Vision and I worked on the album after that. But the, the big album I worked on was the, with Lovers Found. Lovers. Yeah. yeah. And then I thought, well, that was big, but then inseparable. Now inseparable, was the like, big one. Yeah, that was. Well, really if a great work from them time till now, yeah, sir, sir Razor. And, and <coughs> Bonnie Wheeler called me, same thing. I worked on the Rock and Groove album. Because um, actually, the first album I worked on with him was. Um, oh, the name is not coming right, right now, but. I did Rock and Groove and Bon Whaler Sings the Whalers and um, I had a nice little thing with, with, with Bon Whaler because when he came out of, you know, you know he, was, was, he was in, um, him, 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 when he leave the Whalers and thing and he decided that boy he not sing, mm -hmm. and him, um, him, him just never sang for what? He never do anything live for about five years. Why did he make that decision, now? Well, when the, when the wheel has split, mm -hmm. see, well, so when the wheel has split, Bonnie Wheeler didn't come back. For a while. Till yes. about 80 what? 82, 83. So I was a member of that band. Mm. So the first show Bonnie Wheeler did was in... Um, was in um, California. And you were there. Yeah, and, and, and also the big Bonnie Wheeler concert in the National Stadium. They had everywhere for that. Yeah, really man. we did them, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but let's go back to your... Yeah. <laughs> Journey do. When did you actually record it? Your first piece? Um that was a whole mix up situation because at the time now uh, a lot of the producers were mm. saying, yo, we want we this man yeah. for for play some instrumental. So I played for people like Joe Gibbs. We did an album called Black Hand, man. Black Hand, that was your first body yes, of work. Yes, and, mm. and that album, I did record Redemption Song. Yeah? Yeah. Because that was the year Bob died, 81. And so it was like a tribute situation. Exactly. And, thing, and I worked for Donovan Jeremy and also, and Gussie Clark. All of those people, me. You know, so, you know, I was moving around and, mm. and, you know, doing little instrumentals here and there and thing. But the, um, the Redemption song drove me to a big thing because that year with Sunsplash, I featured, I was featured playing Redemption song and um, Jared Park was silent when I started to play. You could hear the instrument any part of Montego Bay did there. <laughs> Nobody made a sound, you yeah. know? So, yeah. So it was a very memorable thing, and people, all these big um, writers from all part of the earth said the same thing. Big moment. Big moment. Mm. Apart from the sax, you're playing it on the instrument? No, sir. <laughs> You yeah, choose that too? Full. No, not really, but you know, when, as I said before, you know, when you, when things bad and you, you have to make them right, you know, th th there was a time when you just wanted to do your work and, 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 and 
you never realize say, if you play another instrument, it will help you. Mm. You understand me? So that was a downfall for me. Oh, okay, so, so you, you yeah. looking back at it, you wish you had experimented yeah, with other of instruments? Course. Of course. Other than the sax, is there an instrument where you like? You know, He's you a think? guitar player. Guitar player. Yes, I'm all, you know, my head all the time. A guitar <laughs> player. A guitar. Well, bass or <laughs> no, guitar. Lead, just guitar. guitar. Yeah. Mm. So till this day, I love guitar music. Yeah? Yeah, man. I always see myself as a guitar, guitar. player. Mm. So, Bunny, mm -hmm. Pe well, the wheel as itself, mm -hmm. when it broke up, Bunny, Peter, D. Brown, the greatest of the greatest, Sir Fraser, have him stamp in the journey then. Yep. Mm. Who you enjoyed working with the most back then though? It would be very disrespectful to say, you know. <laughs> The, the, the quality of, of music where the whalers, let's say the whalers right now, the quality of music where each individual of the whalers right. come out and put out. Can you imagine the whalers split and you have Natty Dread, Black Art Man, and legalize it? Peter come out one time. Um, remember now, you know, and no further bad, 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 bad reggae albums come out. Yes. You understand me? I say, I know, and I was not only them alone. But me just I say, imagine that. Nowadays, you yeah, talk about bring a one album or a two album and the Grammy, you know? <laughs> them days, the. Can you imagine and if we, album, we, we no Grammy. Exactly, if we were at the Grammy, Grammy level at that time. Man. Mm. Unbelievable, you know, three albums where you, you just want to listen to them over and over. You know? Mm. You are not only a sax player, you are also a music producer, arranger, probably a choreographer. Chore no, it's no, a producer. producer. You're and right as well, arranger, that, uh, yeah. and you're right as well. Cover the whole spectrum. Yes, basically. What you enjoy doing the most? Um, I like to play live. You like to play live? I like to play live, but that's a periodic thing, you know? Mm. Because I like to get in that mood where I sit in the studio and you know when the ghost them pass through everything just hit me you understand <laughs> yeah. me so i i like to at times really sit in the studio and, and work and i like to do it early in early the morning. in the morning yeah brain fresh mind fresh very much so mm. very much so is there any particular live session you can remember where just never leave you it was just something special about that session, eh? Yeah. Um, I think back in the day we did, I remember the live session that we did, um, How Could I Leave D Brown? Okay. With Lydie and Sly, and the, the, the session was just rolling. The session was just like the session was just like rolling. It just roll, roll, and at the end of the session, you would say, "I wonder how them sang ya." I go really, what them really are gonna do when with them come out of road? Yeah, so, they were such fantastic songs. Great memory that. Yeah, and, and I remember that Sly and Robbie session that every song became a number one song. Yes. Baltimore, um, 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 Everybody Needs Somebody, Jimmy Riley, um, what's his name? Um, Jokes. Junior Del Guido, you know, Tomlins, all of these songs. That session was became just, hit songs. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Very, 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 you know. 
And so when I did the wake up and live with Bob Marley, that ooh, that just was a good session that as yes, well. Yes, man. So these live sessions were really nice. Mm. <laughs> But this is the guy that listens to you and look for the emotions for your face when you think about it. When did you actually now start to do producing though? From day one. From day one? Yeah? Yeah. And, and we, we, we have to credit Roddy Thomas for that. Mm. Because we were going to, 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 to England for the first time with D. Brown. And Roddy Thomas said, you must walk with a song so that when you reach England, you can eat a food. You understand me? I mean, so I wasn't thinking of anything else. I was just thinking that, yeah, I make an extra money, yeah, man, so I'm going to do this. So I started to produce a tune. And Brother Thomas helped me. Right. Right, and when the song done record, I don't have nobody to sing the song. Because, of course, I'm a novice to the thing. Right. You know? So Brother Thomas said, him will sing the song. Well, that was the beginning because the song came up, became a big Which song. Which song was that? A song named When I Think of You. When I Think of You, Roddy Thomas. Roddy Thomas. Mm -hmm. But original, it was a Leaf Garrett. Oh, okay, oh, okay. And so, the song was exploding in England. So because of that song now, all kind of producers from England started that link to up. link up. Yeah, open our next door, that's all. Exactly. So, it, it, as I said, it started day one, you know? Mm. And then, as we went along, you know, I was summoned to the studio by a good bridge in mind, Gussie Clark, who made me do all his voices and all of that. Yeah? Yeah, man. And Taliban Jeremy and same thing. And then, Fatis Morel, Fattis, really. the same thing, we started to, you know, co-produce most of the sessions and make sure everything sounded and was okay. Yeah, you, you have a year for, for the music? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Is there an artist where you come across for the first time, sir, you know, when you hear him, you say, yes, go then. Yeah, Taurus Riley, Taurus was, one Riley. Of, was one of those and definitely doing Stevenson was one of those. Those, those two characters were mind-blowing when I hear them for the first time. Taros can't sing like Dwayne, but Dwayne can't sing like Taros. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> I understand exactly what I yeah, say. Yeah, because you just hear a man who sound like a bird, and you just hear a man who sound like nobody ever heard. <laughs> You understand me? <laughs> Who's all like the bird? Dwayne, Dwayne can sing like a bird, you know. Come on. But Taurus now. Somebody you never like, heard. You, you wonder if, how oh, oh, this come, how oh, you come by mm. this. You know, so, so these are, are people who, you know, make you understand really how music go. And the first time you heard both of yeah. them, you were yep. sure that Magic. they would become yep. who they are today. Yep. How the link with Dwayne come about though? Well, Dwayne don't go on like him can sing because Dwayne <laughs> have an uncle where we sing him to the ground. Yeah? Yeah. He say only go like he can sing. Yeah, Dwayne uncle named Michael Rutherford. Yeah, but I didn't tell him about Mikey. Uh, yeah, Mike Rutherford, <laughs> Rutherford is that lady Rutherford is, is her father, you know? Yeah? Yes, Diane Rutherford is, Diane, is her. So me and Mike Rutherford go to school together, go Norman Manley together. Oh. So when me say me I leave Sonny Bradshaw band, me make Sonny Bradshaw I am Mikey Rutherford oh, okay. as a singer. But Mikey Rutherford was just good. So one day Mikey just called me and say, you hear me? Me have one little nephew here, you know, where he can't sing and me don't know what to do. 
So Mikey said, do you enter me? So that's how the we rest of history starts. Yeah. <laughs> One of the greatest voices in the yeah. history of the music. Yeah. And you were there from day one. Day one. Yeah. What was he like early out though? Was it difficult to get him? Because a man we can't sing enough for other friends, as you would know, but when he go into the recording booth. Yeah, but that was never his temperament. Mm. That's why he'll be him, him will last a long, 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 long time. It was never his temperament. He he was always ready to be produced. Oh, okay. You understand me? He can't sing, you know. And he no need you for doing, you know, but one of, the, one of the, the bad things about singers is a lot of them being able to sing so well resist being produced mm. and it... But he was not re resistant? No, no man, you know, I find a resistance from doing man. He must say, he must say oh, I so you want it. Yeah. And he say, yeah, because actually um, you have to listen the song through the producer's ears. Right. You understand me? And usually the producer and the singer have two different ears. True. So, you know. Because we have a lot of great singers here in Jamaica, you know. Where if only them would make somebody produce them. Mm. <laughs> I all the doing songs, which one of them resonate the most with you? Um, you know that is get up here and me get little like that is the I remember he was a part of twice yes and I remember saying to them sing something for me wow would I like record you know sing something and them sing a whole heap of nice things but <laughs> when them sing get up here and you know you feel our day I hate so, that yeah you know? Big song. Yep. Yeah. Big tune. How, how, how Dean Fraser get involved with Taros though and Taros that they have big producer that this is for them time till now. Well Taros didn't come pass. to Taros didn't come to me as a singer, you know. Taros have a friend named Lavaska. Mm -hmm. Who is the singer? Okay. Taros is just Lavaska Bridget. Like anybody else in Jamaica, you know, every singer, every DJ have a bridge yes. in with the two of them par. Right. So Lavaska came to Jamaica to do an album that I was producing. And them stay at my house. So me left studio some wee hours and I had an a, a old piano there also. So, so at night time when I reached my yard, Taros was always there, not sleeping. And he was always playing something. So usually I go into my house and I lay down inside of my room now. And Taros was just out there playing, playing, playing. And I listen to him, I listen to his song them, I listen to the lyrical content them when I come with and thing. And I say, you tell a joke. <laughs> so the executive producer who was, you know, mm -hmm. putting up the money and thing. I go to him one day and I said to him, say, Lavaska alright, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> a Taros are the man. Taros are the singer, you know. The man drop a ground man. The man laughed me to scan, man. <laughs> man said me a mad man. Bro. Yeah? Yeah man. He said I'm a mad man. And I said to him, say, all right, just give me a little money and you will see. And even after we put that foot forward, he wasn't really interested in moving Taros forward. He was, him just dead, you know. Mm. I don't think his head was there. Him just dead. So when me, me in the latter part now, the, the early 2000s now, me called Taros and me say, so we're going to just do the one album and that's it. Taros said, what do you want to do? I said, I could record another album. Taros said, but where are we going to get the money from? I said, 
record one song at a time. Don't worry about it. Mm. Don't, don't, don't. And, and this is something the young musicians or young singers are, are the aspiring ones, if you understand. If you look at the, the, the at, 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 at doing an album through the eyes of oh, I forgot the 12 or 13 songs and each song you are talking about is a hundred thousand dollars or so so when him look on 1.2 1.3 million dollars and I say at hard if him just look on it one song at a time one song at a time just make a song because Songs don't spoil it, you have to put it on the fridge, you understand me? I say. <laughs> Songs don't spoil. No, it not spoil. record it, it's there. Recording, it, it's there. Mm. It's especially at the level that we are recording these days. Mm. You know? Don't it's spoil. preserved, yeah, man. So, I said, once a song at the end of us, like a psalm. So, I say, all right. We just record and. Every time I get a little money, I say, yeah, and thing, and if him get a money, I say, yeah, I'm get a money, you know, come, and we just deal with it until we reach. <laughs> so when we reach, we reach parables. Parables. Everything that was that. That is it. Parables. Yeah, man. Duane and, and Taurus, mm -hmm. uh, those are two of the people who you really and truly took and mm -hmm. bring to the people. How come? The great man not really take on more project like Dwayne and Tyrus do. Well, well what we know about Yeah man. Well enough man and know, you know but enough man and Al Sizzler and me too, you know. But when he run a Philip Pratis. Yeah, but me did have Sizzler before that. Oh. Me have Sizzler from eight or nine days. Yeah? Yeah. You have a man named Mr. Harris. Who is really like a godfather to Sizzler? And Mr. Harris brings Sizzler to me. So I recorded Sizzler first. Yeah? Yeah, I recorded a song named Explain to Almighty. Explain to Almighty. Yeah, Sizzler first tune that way I record and it boss. You understand me? Yeah, man, I like a tune and say, Killing is not talk about. Oh, oh I know I sang then, man. Yeah, explain to Almighty. Yes, yes, yes. Explain to Almighty. But me, carry still sizzler in the studio. I go pick him up at school at Dunhoon. And I carry him, go anchor, put on the tape. And he must DJ the song from top to bottom. I never even stop, never even itch. One so, go. One go. Yeah. So, yeah, man. So you have a man like Sizzler, where I have You were instrumental. And me, me. Mm. And you understand me? And um, the, 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 the thing with the bias, really, with, with, with Dwayne and, and Taurus, is that I was lucky to, and I say lucky because it, 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 it don't happen a lot to have two real smart singers mm. who the, the two we never, never end up have a fight about this and fight about publishing and, f and when 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 Dwayne friend called him from England and said Dwayne you're the biggest thing me here one song on radio up here with you and you know and Dwayne and Taros could have come on me yeah, the next morning and say, yo, who are money, you know, because we hear so we tune up play England and all them things. They say, so, you, you, I had two artists who understood they the understood whole our thing. thing. Uh. They understand the whole thing and, and it made life easier and just make you want to say, that's why I'm going to work with them, man, I am, and I can't bother. Mm. Do you have any field projects? Like artists you take on and... It never happened. For whatever reason. Yeah. You know, so I don't really remember none of that. No feelings. No, we, yeah. because the 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 um the ability, you know, for 
for, for set up the things so that it, it happened. Um, I would, yeah, I have a little bit of a DJ from Trinidad. Mm. His name is Senan. Senan? Senan, yeah. So, okay. So even his name came up when that slang came in Jamaica. Ah, Sen, Sen, Sen. Man said Senan. Sen, ah, Senan. Sen, sen, sen. So his name is Senan. But man used to just call him Senan, he was a fantastic DJ. Yeah? What? And when Taros boss, I don't think he wanted to wait anymore. Mm. He never have to wait more than about six months. You know, more and more than boss. What is him? Couldn't wait. Yeah, and him, him failed the project. That's basically it. But yeah. Him, uh, most of what I took on and, and started to coach and all that. Shut. Yeah, ended up just... <laughs> yeah, so we don't about do here, we don't about Taros. You just mentioned yeah, Sizzler. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when I get funny to Sir Fraser, because I mean, well, your footprint yeah. is, is in many places in yeah, the music. Man. But you don't seem to be somebody who will come, run, come, so you don't see a yeah. minute. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, apart from really. Duane and Taros and Kalanji, yeah, is there anybody else whose career you were instrumental in? Um... Who do I look at now? Well, I wouldn't say they kept the career, but I have worked with them mm -hmm. and and the the work that we, we did was Fruitful. successful, mm -hmm. yes. You understand me? So and I've 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 had to work with quite a couple of people. Freddie McGregor, um, D. Brown himself, um, have an heritage. I mean, plenty of people didn't know that I produced. That was the production owner and owner of I'll Be Done by the River, is my son. Yeah? Yeah. You yeah, understand me? And me and Freddie co right? You didn't have to tell you how I feel. And them song there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All of, that, all of that production is mine too. So, as I said, We've, we've been around the world. And <laughs> <laughs> you see, like you're comfortable behind the scene, though, Sir Fraser. No matter to me. Just make I, the thing happen. Yeah, man. The, 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 the whole upfront thing. I mean, I've been there, you know, and, you know, I, I like to sit and look at. What we made and 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 and, yes. and 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 look at how it just come up in the world and just plant itself, you know. And I think I enjoy that more than running up and down every day and go up on stage and make enough noise and say, oh, "Yeah, me do that and beat me chess." Huh? Yes, you know that. Is uh, there entertainment in the business where you never work with, but you look upon them and say, "If me get the artist, say, say, problem." Um, it, it's not coming up right now, but mm. I think a couple of them were there. A couple of them were there. You know, yeah, I they, wish. Yeah, you they get a chance to help yeah. groom them musically. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah. Quite a, a few of them. Talk to us about the daffodils, though, because probably a lot of people are not familiar with the part of the thing there. Yeah, well, the daffodils came... I... I, I took over the rain. So it existed before? No, I took over the rain of Luciano. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it was my turn to groom Luciano and say, well, look, brother, you're going to be a frontline man. You need to exercise, you need to breathe properly, you know. So, at that time, you know, me, Luciano, Mikey General, and we, me, we play football like 6.30 every morning. You know? Yeah? Yeah, man, we exercise hard and thing, you know. And, you know, we say, well, this is the way how it go on. So, it was time now for Luciano to start rehearse. So apart from getting, you know, the lungs in the right place and, you know, getting fit, it was time now to bring out his musical genius. And so 
it reached a stage where we needed harmony. Mm -hmm. Well, Firehouse Crew was the backing band, mm -hmm. and we needed some harmonies. Firehouse Crew, now, I started to rehearse them. And because they, they never played as a live band, you know, they played in the studios the at studio, Tobis. Right. And so I started to, you know, get them and get them to play as a unit, you know. And I mean, we sat there and rehearsed for more than a year. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, man. We just rehearse, 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 rehearse every day, like five days a week. And then you have a great little singer named Lime Murray. Mm, yeah, man, familiar with I him. I said to him, say, Boy, I can't bother try to use the same two or three people when a singer they use. I said, I'm going to get my one singer them. And Lime said to him, I said, I know two girls we can sing, you know. And then I said, Bring them come. And one evening, him just bring Altia Lane Hamilton, rest in peace, and Connie Campbell, rest in peace. And him just said, uh, See them there? <laughs> so, you know, we have them sit down and thing and we just have them come, observe first, and then we give them the songs to learn and we start to teach them. Teach them, teach them, teach them until the first concert was at Irie FM, uh, White River Bash, mm -hmm. uh, which we never. We were not very, very, very well received. Uh, yeah? No. <laughs> People them start run we off of the stage and think as they never think. Them couldn't they don't know the levels there. Couldn't deal with this new sound and mm. everything. Uh. But one year later, I watched Luciana walk on the people them head from the stage to the back. Same on White River Reggae Bash. Same White River Reggae Bash. And so he had to inter he was introducing the band the night and he must look over upon the ladies, the man was called them the daffodils. Uh, so the, 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 that's where the whole daffodil yeah, name came from. from and <laughs> yep. Simple as that. Simple as that. And I mean, that was those three ladies, including Sherry, Sherida Sharp, mm -hmm. afterwards. She was the last person to join the group. I think they were the sound of the late 90s. And most of the hit songs. Oh, yeah. Your creation yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. They, they were the sound. <laughs> So if I you are doing it as somebody where you make a do it me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Everything man. governed. Yeah. yeah so. so after the, the ladies passed on, what well, the daffodil in in it don't live to today? Um well I had work with different people and mm -hmm. so now I I just choose any three, any three or any four I want to work with for the day. See, so now I work with like Nikki Bird and Sherida, of course, and Sherita Lewis, whom I remember taking her into the studios while I was doing Parables. Yes, okay. And she just fly out like a bullet because she's excellent. Good. Yeah. So, so what I've really... I even worked with her yesterday. Yeah? Like, yeah, man. Mm. So. The thing is that, I sit down here so with the greatest saxophonist in the history of Jamaican music. Not only that, but a range and stuff. And me know my people. They say, oh, you have to interview Dean Fraser and you know, play two songs for me. Like, <laughs> but tell us, can't even tell if you walk with your sax, you know? No, I mean, no. <laughs> but separate and, that part. And, and, and we, we can't play. We right can't because they might record upstairs. They might figure as much as two. So you would have worked behind the scene on the scene, in front of the scene, everywhere. You have the experience of being in the shadows and being at the forefront. I think you're comfortable everywhere. Yeah, man. Um, 
the most important thing in any music life is to be comfortable. Comfortable. Yes, when, when, when the act is overzealous and, mm -hmm. and, and start to make, the, 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 if you introduce an act and you say, welcome on stage, Jabba, and the crowd go, ah, and him go, what? Are so much people check for me, are so much people love me, or well, me them people are come for see. And the music start to play and him don't realize because he's thinking of it's caught up in the, the whole mm. thing that's happening out there and people are we have flag and a jump up and shout and scream. So if you know mind sharp when him touch all the stage, him start singing half key. So the, 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 the most important thing to do yes. is to be relaxed. Mm. And even me as an instrumentalist, when there are difficult parts to play, if I do this, I will never play properly. Mm. I relax. have to just relax and just let my fingers do the work. You spoke to us about you know, your interaction with Bob and Pete and Bunny. Yeah. But you also have history with Jacob Miller. Very much. Mm, talk to us a little bit about that. Huh? Quickly, GX was. We, we, are, we are bridging. Bridging. Yeah. And uh, after leaving Trenchtown, I went to live in Harborview. And Jacob will find him way to my yard by 8 o'clock every morning. I yeah? Said, yeah, him drive him car, come. I said, come! Like so I was also a part of the inner circle. You. You're yeah, part of inner with, circle. I played with inner circle too. So, you know, all of that and thing. And, and for, unfortunately, when Jake's died, I was not even in Jamaica. I was on tour with Culture. Oh, you were? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's yeah, the next name. Yeah, <laughs> we go back in. I was on tour yeah, with, with Culture. culture. Yeah. Mm. But me and Jake's. And Bridget. Everywhere. Them used to think we are brethren. Yeah? Yeah, man. Me and him used to die everywhere. One of the potential legends that died too soon. Yeah, him, he's definitely... Him definitely was way ahead of him. Time him. That, that, that was a man who... I don't think I've seen anybody to date who can perform like Like that. Jacob Miller? Yeah. Yeah? It's big statement, that's it? Yeah, man. Serve as a... Yeah, man, him, him, him the level, him never, him would have never, him no old back, him no, him, you know, and he could sing also. Yes. The One Love Peace concert, when I sit down and meds him for two still, because that's the, oh, one of the few recordings. Yeah, but well, if you look at that concert, you will see, see me exactly. on stage you are, with them. Yeah? Yep. I got Yeah. Um, yeah, you just mentioned another massive name in the history book of reggae, yeah, culture. Yeah. You were on the road with, yeah, yeah, you work with culture. I work with culture in the studio and I've, I tour with him. Burning Spear. Burning Spear, I worked with him in the studios. I've never toured with never him, toured but Burning I, Spear. I worked with him in the studios also. Mm -hmm. And you, you, know? you got all about the lotion. All about. Studio road Studio everywhere. Studio road everywhere. We, you know, um, I've, I've worked with Abyssinians, both in studio and, and on the road. Actually, Abyssinians recording of this land was one of my favorite. Well, and not only favorite, but one of my first yeah. recordings. Yeah. yeah. Also, in the same category of one of the first was... Um, same song, Israel Vibration. Israel Vibration. Yeah. And um, I remember also you now working with Jimmy Cliff, <laughs> where I worked as um, I worked as an arranger for arranger. Treat the Youth, right? Uh, I did the horn arrangements and all of that. Yeah. So I've been there. So I've simply been. put, Dean Fraser work with all the greatest Just simpler than, members simpler of the entertainment that. industry. From Bob Marley to Beanie Man. Simpler Bob Marley to Beanie Man. Simple as that. Yes. 
speaking about Beanie Man, yeah. the first time I remember, well, the first time I remember seeing Dean Fraser was on Man Fee Have Enough Girl. Yeah. I think. That was right. a little bit of boy. Right. Enough girl. Enough girl. And yeah, two, you gotta go and take my chalk and mark up your uh, Well, that wasn't me. That, that was, wasn't you? No. Really? No, that was a little trumpeter, a bugle player. Really? Oh, yeah, man. And he go, pam, 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 pam. So, why do you think I would have? Because plenty of people just think it's me, but it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> but you were on. Man, we have enough girl. Yeah, enough girl is definitely me. And uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah that, mm. and that's, uh, that's definitely yeah. me. Yeah. In in the modern dance hall space, so apart from being it, who else you? I have not really worked with anybody up front with the, with the new dance hall Trust. era. Yeah. You know, I. Choice. I don't know. No, but ah, the music not though. Be a son. Be a the music. Then you know, call for your skill set. No, not really. Yeah. And you know, sometimes a lot of them check me when they want certain things, and you know, a lot of them check me on the vocal right. part of things right. also. So you know, we we still work alongside them and mm. things. But I hope them them would have just call. When them need help and not go it alone and it don't really happen how it's supposed to happen, you know? So <laughs> From Bob to Beady. Yeah man, we work with enough people, you know, yeah. gentleman. Gentleman. Yeah, you know, and um I've done a lot in England also. I've yeah. With, yeah man, enough people in England and you know, a lot of Europeans and Mm. Have you worked on any Grammy Award winning album? Um, I would say maybe it's about two or three. Maybe it's about two or three. Album that I didn't work on. <laughs> so of all the Jamaicans who have won the Grammy, only about two or three didn't yeah, phrase a stamp is not on. Right. Mad thing. Yeah, man. Big league. Yeah, man. And it's not all of them you are playing the sax. Some of them you have written songs on or... Not are written, but I, I helped to produce, produce and all of that. Yeah? Yeah. First Grammy album, Black Hole. Black Hole. That was serious work. Burning Spear, you know, Bonnie Wheeler, you know, Jimmy Cliff. All a lot of albums, man. That I have a stamp on it. Yeah, man. Sean Paul, a lot of albums. <laughs> <laughs> you said that the Abyssinian song um, was one of, is one of your favorite recordings. This land, yeah. This land is one of your favorite recordings. Yeah. It's, it's safe to assume that that is your favorite piece of work. No. No. No, what not necessarily. It's, it's just that. That that also was a very memorable studio session. Yes, mm -hmm. because I was bridging the gap at that time. I was a young sixteen or seventeen year old musician, and around me was Tommy McCook was there, Herman Marquis was there, Bobby Ellis is there, Vin Garden is there, Dirty Harry is there, and. He's just a super great, you know, Bubbles Cameron, and I was, every time a mistake make, them place me in the middle, you know. So every time a mistake make every head, Everybody look for you. Look at me. And me just stand up so straight, because I know I know me make no mistake, boy. <laughs> so, True, yeah, you have one there. Yeah. yeah, so that that session, i never forget it. Mm, good you know? stuff. What's your favorite? Song we have a player, player. Well, I don't mean, know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sometimes it it it, it, don't go, it only hit you when you hear it. You hear it and mm. or somebody will redo it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said, Jaja. Yes, you know, but songs come and songs, songs go. go. <laughs> Tell you. <laughs> yes. In terms of success, which piece of work have you been on? Whether yours or 
we, has, has had the biggest international success? Larry Hill. Larry Hill. Yeah, that thing. That thing. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Mm-hmm. You played on it? Yeah, man. I'm going to listen to that thing again. Yeah, man. You see, that is why we, that's part of the reason why we do this still in the father. But we learn. We learn it. You understand? So that has been the, the biggest international yeah, success. Well, you know, for, 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 for now. I know. Yeah, can I remember say all an album like Survival, Survival. is Massive. huge, you know. Mm. But Legal like if, it, and yeah, if you talk about international, you know, yes. yeah, Lauren Hill was like that thing. I I, I played about uh, I played about three tracks on the Miss Education. Miss Education. Yeah, well, me number and Everal Ray. Great number. Yeah. Mm. Are they still good cars? Yeah. No man, so yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see look up some things to go Yes. So you have been I, I guess the better question is where haven't you been around the world? Like I'm, you have been on the road with culture, you have been on the road with D Brown, you have been on the road with practical Luciana. But where are some of the places that you have gone? By everywhere. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I've not touched like Indonesia Asia. and Sahel, mm. you know, and like India. Oh, okay. Those are two other places. You yeah, haven't been yet. I haven't been yet, but down yeah. and uh, everywhere. Everywhere, so, Australia, everywhere. Uh, yeah, man. Where's your favorite place to perform, to go and, and work? Like, you look forward to that energy and the vibration there. You know, sir, you know, I like Canada. I like Canada. I like Barbados. Yeah? Yeah, I like Trinidad. Um, I don't know, for some reason... Vibes, right, nice. Very good vibe. Mm. Very, very, very good vibe. Um, I like Scandinavia. Okay, Finland, all that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think France and England still hold the, the reign as maybe number one and number two. As the diehard lovers of the music, yeah. Um, I like Germany, which um, that came out in that special MTV thing that I did with Gentleman, right? Um, that showed you know a lot, you know, um, showed people getting to see the music in a different light, you know. But I I I do like I do like the Caribbean. People. I like the Caribbean. I realize that because Barbados and TNT. Yeah, man. Bar, Bar, Barbados is although is a weird kind of place more time. You <laughs> yeah. Know. You know. Um, you know. But I I look on that from a administrative. Yeah. Point. Oh, okay. You understand, understand me? Exactly like, you yeah, understand sir. me? And I saw the people them and stay. Mm. You understand me? Trinidad, same kind of thing. And I saw the people them stay. Yes. The people them. Uh, what, I have a lot of great friends in those, in those places. places. You know, yes. And them now look upon I as a Jamaican man. And you understand me? I mm. said right, 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 right. You look upon as a musician. And when we, when Taurus Riley got Trinidad, he's like he's home. Me, I tell you that. Yes. A couple of artists will me interview them said Trinidad are them favorite place to yeah, go still. Man. It's like he's so. Yes. You have been on the road with some of the biggest acts in the history of the music where you pull some massive, massive crowds. Mm -hmm. Where have you gone when you see that crowd? You can't believe there's so much people there in one place. Japan. Japan. <laughs> Japan tell you. Japan splash? Japan. Ah, it was a splash. splash. Okay. Yes. <laughs> You know, we have had a, we had a, we have had a couple eighty thousands, and I think I remember one that I did with because I worked also with I Tree outside I3. of Bob Marley as yeah? the musical director. Yeah, man. Yes. Yeah, man. And <laughs> Japan is Japan is serious. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Japan yes. is serious. Back to your musical mm -hmm. thing again. You have done. Quite a few albums. Tribute to Bob Marley, one, volume one, one and volume two. two. Right. 
remind me the rest of them on podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bob Marley. That was like one of the most successful ones. Yeah. That tribute album, that Bob Marley one tribute album, actually may have made it to the Grammys. You know, it was edged out by Burning Spears. Burning Spears. Yeah, and then um, I also did that. Uh, 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 a tribute to Gregory to and D bro. Oh, okay. You understand me? So, you know, we keep getting there. And yes. um, I did an album. Pure Horns. Yes. We, revolutionary we, um, Sounds. Yeah, well, Pure Horn was Joe Gibbs. Revolutionary yeah. Sound was Donovan Jeremy. Donovan Jeremy and Pentos. Yes, Pentos. Mm. So, you know, you have all of, the, all of those records out there, but. There was also a, a, an album for Island Records called Big Up. Big Up. Yeah. Chris Blackwell set in. Yes. Mm. You know, so all of these, you know, those were, they, they were great experiments of, you know, reggae and jazz improv and all of mm. that. So that was something else. Reggae Gone Country. Reggae yeah. Gone Country produced by myself. Too. You produce it? Yeah. 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 yeah it was lot, and um, what's her name? Krista Baba. Chris, yeah? She, yes, it was her idea and thing, and I produced it. Really how well did that do, though? That was supposed to be a very, very big album, you know, but the politics got in the way, so, but it was great. You know, it, um, it did, Romain Virgo did well, because he went to Nashville, and they were impressed with him and all of that, and then they came to Jamaica, and, you know, but, yeah, that was one of my projects that I really loved. Really love it, yes. Any anything recent? Anybody I work like that recently? No, no, no not at all. Um, so finally, I get a chance to do an album alongside Ernie Ranglin. Ernie Ranglin. So that will be out sometime. It's Tad's Records. Okay. That will be out sometime. This year? No. Okay. Next year, next year, boys. Boys, yeah. the work has yeah. started on it, though. The work finished. The work finished. Yeah. Okay. The work finished. Okay, so just to clean up and yeah. mix and master and all yeah. of these things. Yeah, man. Mm. And then I've done the Dean Fraser Christmas album. Right. And I have a, my my album that's coming out in the second quarter here now is called Flatbridge. Flatbridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's instrumental, and then. We, we, we're doing a dub album now with me and the young musicians that are around me now, which is young um, Okil McIntyre mm -hmm. and young Ocean Love, you know, and... Um, you are instrumentalists or vocalists? They are instrumentalists, instrumentalists. trumpet and saxophone. Oh, okay. And, yeah, um, the next um, day in Fraser. Yes. And, 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 and Fletcher... Um, trombone player yes and so we, we you know what we do now is make me set up the whole thing and so we get them to be familiar and, and, and get them to understand their music yes. you know and, and, and we are talking about understanding feel understanding how it sounds so you are in the process of creating the next generation of top yeah man. Instrumentalist. Yeah man. I, I, me and them in a studio I work right now, every day. Every day. Yeah man. So mm. we have a set of musicians who totally understand what is going on as horn players. Yes. And and who can just do the thing. It. Yes. Is there is there a concern though, Sir Fraser, that instrumentalists are a dying breed in the country? Seeing that the thing has become so digital, no. They are not, no. They are done. Is, 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 is there a bill? You see, remember all me have lived through this late 70s and all of the 80s and 90s, you know, with the, with the, 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 the dance hall being digital. Emerge, right. Emerge and so, if you are able to, if, if, if you are able to, um, Stay with your music, you know. It's Stay with it's the just music. about staying with the music, paying attention to it. Mm. You understand me? Because I will put man know the music. A lot of people know the music, know good music, can play their instrument and everything, you know. But them don't move with the times. Them not paying nah, attention. Evolve. 
you know mm. them now watch the youth them them now watch all the people them dance them you understand me i said them just uh, say oh child i'm like a boy mm. that's not the way you have to watch the youth them watch all them a dance these days you watch how a man move and thing and you apply yourself and you you make music that can fit you know watch tempos and all of that you understand me so that is most important you yes. know that is so much importance in 1993 dean fraser was given the musgrave medal for his contribution to the music by the government great achievement 2020 again you were also given the jerry award no man 2015 2015 od, OD. yeah so 2015 yeah. order of distinction yeah. contribution to the music again yeah. yes jerry i never give you something yeah man 2019 yeah. yeah so the work is there and the recognition is coming in slowly out of distinction that must have been a great feeling yeah but again you, you know mister <laughs> and the the part of that that really yeah. the look on my aunt face was where my heart did full with joy she was happy for you because she is the person who introduced me to music and so when i looked at her face you know, when them call my name and, you know, I walked up to be decorated and thing. You know, my applause from the crowd was, I thought maybe the only person who had a big applause than me was Usain Bolt. Oh, yeah, that was 2015, got, right, yeah. right, right, right. So my, my auntie was so proud and she just started to glow and, you know, yeah. that is where my feeling came from. Yes. You understand what I said? The joy in your hands. Joy, I'm a joy. If you say the fear, joy. Congratulations, man. When man yeah. do good work, and forget good things. Uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you say is Dean Fraser's single greatest musical achievement along the journey thus far, though? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't paying attention. You wasn't paying attention. No, I don't right. know. Mm. Is there anything musically do we not achieve it, Sir Fraser? Where you hope you achieve something one of them time? Well, me, me just go and work, you know. Just I go mean, and work. the achievements will come. You know, it, 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 it don't really matter. Just the good it, things. It, yes, me can't bother try if you go for work for that achievement. Yeah, that's our work. My achievement is to make good songs. You understand me? That's our achievement. But then, what come after that? You Th understand Things just take care of themselves. Take care of themselves. Mm. Looking at the journey, though, Sir Fraser, mm -hmm. is there anything that you do differently on a musical level if you get the chance to relive the musical As me journey? Say, me should I should go back to school. Should I go back to school when I link your back? When I link my forward. Mm. So that may have been. A little know, regret. Yes, but. No. No. Otherwise, full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. Not changing no course. <laughs> Sir Fraser, you have worked with the who is who in the music. Yeah? Is there anybody who you know work with yet? I don't know why I ask the question. Mm -hmm. That you don't mind going to the studio go do some work with one of them time? You know the music? I think there may be a few people who <laughs> who I can I can, I could go in the studios. I would like to go into the studio and say, Yeah, yeah come, we could do some work. Yeah. You do anything with Barris? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of the big Barris there. Yeah, there's somewhere over there. All of Barris songs, man. Mm. You see, me Mr. and Barris. playing Devil's Advocate, me man. Me and Barris playing a Sonny Bradshaw band together. Barris was in Sonny Bradshaw. Yes, man. Barris and myself. We were two little youngsters in Sonny's band, and when we don't play a night time, me and him got married to one after that. Sonny's seven has done great for Jamaica's music then, man. Yes, I would think Dean so. Dean Fraser, yeah. the great bears. Yeah, yeah Vox Brown, Vox Brown. Winston Grennan. I mean, Grennan was one of the most fantastic drummers out of Jamaica. Yes. 
I mean, before Grenon died, he was playing with all Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So, yeah, man, quite a few. Desi Jones was the drummer also from yes. Sonny Bradshaw 7. Speaking yeah. about drummers, um, fellow passed on recently, you yeah. also worked with him. He was on the Christmas album with you, ain't it? Yeah, well, he was only able to play, what was it, one or two songs? One or two songs. Yeah, he, he didn't have enough strength. Strength, you yes. know. But I mean, I, I remember, I wouldn't say discover, because he was already established as a good drummer. Mm. I brought him into Luciano's band and took him on tour with me. You understand me? So from that, me and him became close, you know. <laughs> yeah. Who is the greatest vocalist need phrase I ever hear within two years? Um, one of, I think, Bonnie. Jabby. Bonnie Ruggs. Oh, Bonnie Ruggs, okay, I thought. Yeah. Um, Bonnie, Bonnie Ruggs. Okay, Bonnie Ruggs. Yeah, I think that's one of the greatest vocals I've ever heard. Yes, and uh, that's coming from a man who worked with Dwayne Stevens. Yeah, yeah. Bonnie Ruggs. And, yeah, Bonnie Ruggs was. Special. Really, really, really wicked, you know. And I mean, I tell you already, D Brown. D Brown, yes. People like AJ Brown. AJ Brown, yeah. Quite Brown, a few yes. great vocalists, you know. Mm. You understand me, I say. And then you, you have the vocalists like Taurus Riley, who you don't hear them nowhere else. <laughs> you understand me, so. These are the people who really stand out. Yes. You know? I think the greatest singer though was Bob Marley. Bob Marley was the greatest he singer. He don't have no voice. He don't no voice. But he can sing you to the ground. <laughs> but that's what exactly what I said. Yeah, yeah, man. The greatest no, singer, yeah. Bob Marley. Yeah, he don't no, have no voice, you know. Yes. If he no, if him start singing, I say, uh, you know. I mean, if, 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 if you should introduce him to anybody as, as a, a singer. singer. And I say, we jamming. Yeah, yeah, I say, oh. Huh? But him could sing it to the ground. Yeah, that's not exactly what you just said, brother. Yeah. No people it's probably don't get that. Well, they don't exactly get it. Uh, one day they will get <laughs> one it. One day yeah. they will get it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you have been doing music from 15, 16. That's your life. Is there anything out there where you love enough where you then do for put food by your family table if it wasn't music? Why? Unfortunately, it 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 not that not exists, you know. That <laughs> it it has never happened. Yes. And it not going up. Mm. You understand what I mean? I say Just it, music. Yeah. That, that, there's nothing else that has distracted me from the music. The, the only thing that distracted me before music was cricket. Oh, yeah, I love to, cricket. Used to play cricket. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that and from my auntie beat me. For, for school music school and play cricket. Get up. Me not play about that. Right? But there, there there was never anything else. Oh, maybe art. Yeah, you yes, are. Yes. Because yeah. I, I used to do a little drawing as a youngster. And I did a little exam that would, would have taken me in take me into the um, the Jamaica School of Art. But I went to school of music instead. School of music instead. Yeah, so. There's nothing there that, that, that has made me want to turn. Mm. Seeing some directly, you know, blinkers on. Ah, serious in style. <laughs> you are a well known writer as well. Yeah. You write for a lot of people? No, I, I mostly co write. You co write? Yes, mm. I mostly co write. Like, I, the, one of the biggest things I've ki I came I remember com coming up with the give praise to Rastafari. I remember coming up with that line for Luciano. And as I said to you, me and Freddie McGregor do a little writing. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you want to go, you mm -hmm. must go. And if you want to stay, come mad. You know, these are songs that I you know, pen something pen up and you know, get the thing going and get the thing flowing. And uh, me and sing a taro, sit down and, and pen some little things. things. things to, yeah, so mm. It's about, you know, making everybody a part of the whole yes. thing. You know? Yes. Normally when I interview people from the 70s, 80s in the business, the recurring 
theme is people not collect, people can't collect publishing and royalties. How is Dean Fraser in that regard? Well, I don't understand this thing when them say people not collect publishing and royalties. Right, the art, some of the artists say them, 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 them have difficulties to collect them things because man trick them and no, them man, sign they, they, some they, contract with yes, them. Yes, I understand. And yeah, and, and a lot of the artists them have to blame themselves for things like that because man is supposed to trick you. You're, you're supposed to look, you're an artist. Right. And you are paid to do concerts and all of that. And uh, you should take the time to pay a liar $500 for a radio contract and point you in the right direction. Yes. You see, in the long run, you are going to be the beneficiary. You understand me? And so it, it makes no sense you sit down now and cry and say, you're not get this and that. Plus, you have the, the relative organizations and music houses that you join mm. and get all of this thing done. So, you know, you have to be like up and ready. And so you're thinking balance them with it? Well, you see, not, 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 not all the time, you know, but mm. of late mm. I learn how to get that done, so I just get it done. And the funds are on. And the funds are for us. <laughs> yes. And then a question I need to ask, because I know some, some younger folks who I watch it, probably some instrumentalists. Is there enough money out there for instrumentalists to, to, to lead a, a good, comfortable life to serve Fraser? Music in general don't have enough money, especially for, for people like, like us. Most of the artists, they eat the food. It's the artists, they eat the food. But then, <laughs> Diversity. Yes. Spread the wings. Exactly. Build a brand. So Why? instead of me just play a sax alone and then pack up and go be hard, me, me learn how to listen, give people direction in how they must sing or where they must sing. Tell them say that note not right, that note right. You understand me? Co arrange and co right, arrange. And this is where now you spread your wings. Diversify and, and, your brand. Yes. So. As an instrumentalist alone, it's it probably tight. It is very tight. It's very, very tight. Cause but why a, do a Sir Fraser and one of my artists and sound good? Yeah, yeah without but the rhythm and, me understand. Yeah. But then you see, as I said to you, just know that everybody's learning how the whole copyright and mm. all of that going on. So people are, I mean, people still not giving people them due, but it's becoming, everybody is, is, is being educated yes. now, you know? And you have JK you know? Mm. You, you need to join JK or, you know, go there, read some pamphlets and, and understand the business. Yes. For a man who is so versed in the music, for a man who is so knowledgeable, how come we don't see a Dean Fraser in the formal education system teaching? I have no papers. I have no papers. I have no papers. I don't have a paper I will put up on my wall. I have a issue with the paper thing, you know, because a man like you don't need paper. So that's what I have a issue with that. Thing, what, you know. is, you, you, what you say, you say that's what society look at when they are making their decisions to say, well, yeah. But, because it would have been easy for society to accept me with paper Yet I don't have the the facility. I can't. It's not here, you know. But I have the paper. You understand me? So you know exactly what that goes. Uh, 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 that, that's right. So that is how the thing goes. So, but but then me now wait for society to tell me. Right now, anytime I get a chance, me party to the youth them. Yes. And, and but that, that is something that you you would enjoy doing, though. Yes. Yeah, man, but... But you just do it informally now. Yes, because like last year, O'Shea now is a super sax player. Yes. You know, the school asked me now to teach him for him last term. Yes. You understand me? You know, which COVID come in and that never materialized. 
but the teaching materialized. Come right. just call him and say, come. I can't come and studio with me every day. Every day. Yeah. Teach him the ins and outs and them things. And he might teach me enough things because... Teach you enough things. Yes, all, all, the, all, the, the, all, the theory, enough all the theory and the things that I step across. Right. Where he have... He just say, yeah, man, so and so, so and so. so. But, you know, I mean... You have the practical and he might get a kind of theory. Not even practical and all. I have a lot of history that of he theory, him yes. don't understand. Him don't know. Him now not get none of book and everything. And you understand me? So he said, go. Mm. But that, 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 that paper thing is a foolish most important. important. Upon a level. So them say. And me until as a <laughs> trained teacher. Yeah. Yeah, paper thing now is work out. I see yeah. enough people with paper and yeah. them light. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I see people without paper and them heavy brother. Yeah, man. You yeah, understand? Yep. But our society set up still. Yep. But it's good that you still can, you know, impart some of the knowledge to the youth seminar yeah, and farmer yeah. settings and thing and thing and thing. So album in the works. As I said, Flatbridge, Flatbridge. just finished. And the, the, the thing that we're working on is a nice dub album. Dub we, album. We Jamaica is is, is is becoming very unfortunate in losing its roots. In inventions, yes, and um, unfortunately, the, the 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 young dancer crew, I think, I don't think they may check the U rise and the you know, rise because and yes, because U rise being credited time. right now as the daddy, the daddy, we start hip hop. You understand me? And I think maybe if 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 we young DJs and thing or dance hall stars really looked into that, they would have been a little more grounded in, in, in the music. Yeah, you know? But some of them man never done sit near Sir Fraser. No. Well, this, you know? I know, but you see, him dissing me don't change the slice the day uh, the time of the day. Mm. You understand me? Him dissing me is all it all going to happen is that ten years from now him say, ja, ja. Oh no that the man did say and me diss him. Mm. You understand me? Because me know right say me know dance hall when dance hall was a place. Right. You know? Them know dance hall when the place dance hall become a genre. And them not understand it. Plenty of them. Plenty do, you know. Yes, that is true. Plenty do. Because uh, me personally, I've had a chance to work with TJ. And he surprised me because of how he spoke and, 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 and what he wanted to achieve. Mm. And I did see, say, well, him head not really just dead. So he might think. I think. They understand me. And... No, for the youth, they never really I think. A man just come to the and him thing and, you know, the, 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 one of the things that I think is, is, is happening with dance hall is the fashion and the lifestyle is overshadowing. Trumping the music. The music. And it, that, that needs to be repaired, you know. <laughs> it should be the other way. Yes, you know? yes, it, yes, it, it, yes. It should be other be a, It's a music that's supposed to overshadow the lifestyle and the thing. But I guess, you know, when you look at social media, trending is the music. That's the thing that for true. You understand me? And we want to... We want to have the real music trending and not a trend, you know? So Deep. I mean, if you even look simple, all of the dance hall things that happened last year, you see the one dance hall song that, that says, baby, when the bright lights are to fade, the only real musical melody that came with a dance hall thing, auntie, People went crazy. You understand me? And dance hall can go the way they all the time. And the man them know that because when them get a million views, Beyonce get a billion views. 
and it's the same dance all thing she has a sample and a lick but mm. you understand me I said to you so the man that is where the man them head must be that is how them supposed to think so you need to be in a tertiary yeah. system of speech <laughs> Yo, so the tertiary system <laughs> not accept me at all. You understand what I said? You understand what I said to you? So when, when a little artist dead and he say, Yo, it's a million views me slap today. But but when um the English singer they come out with him like a toop, toop, cap, toop, toop, cap, toop. Ed Sheeran. Because Ed Sheeran, of course, is who I'm speaking of. <sighs> Him just run away gone with everything. Billions. And then the man them take slight jump track where he make from 1985 Murder She Wrote and them just call it reggaeton. Reggaeton. See, nobody in the Spanish music industry made that track. Is the exact slide on bar track them use. You understand what I said to you? And, you know, we making some little, I call it bastard hip hop. We making some little bastard hip hop beats. <laughs> and then, so here we were calling you know, dance trap. So we, we not only, I try make another music ours, we are label another music ours. Trap dance See, Reggae music, Jamaican music in general has never taken on any other, uh, other music, that music they Jamaican but music. Jamaican. Mm. And we, we and, and the mute of Fino said they're supposed to be proud of this because look how we, three million people. Mm. And if you put up a map of the world, we don't exist. True. Because you'd have had to. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up till you see a little dot start up here. Mm -hmm. And thing yet still, we own Skia. We own Mentor. Rocksteady. We own Rocksteady. We own Reggae. We own Dance All Five. Genre. Five different genre in our little country of three million people. And America don't own a genre. So this is what we're talking about, and 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 we have like we have <laughs> out of our five genre, four is pop music, four is music where go out there and 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 take on the world, take on the world by Tank itself. The globe. Yes, mm. pop music. So them so you have dancer because. We did have that. Me personally have danced all as a new pop since the passing of Michael Jackson. All right. When dance all that tempo, that dance all tempo, what we did have, it started to rock the world. But the only person who made money was Ed Sheeran, Beyonce. No Jamaican. No Jamaican now make the money off of it. You understand me? Sean and Shaggy. Right. Yes. Eat a little you know? food. Eh? But the, 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 the whole thing just. You know, just a leave way, you understand me? And we are hanging on. I think we are hanging on to something that... We own. You know, how we own the thing, man, if we just won it. You know, and so... It's not about where a man think or where a man wants to say, yeah, it's a new thing. You understand me? Look, look. Youngsters must know. I watch... I watch the American music. And look at all of the great rappers. When you talk to him, I tell you about Marvin Gaye. I tell you about Danny Hathaway. I tell you about Beatles. I mm -hmm. tell you about Wings. I tell you about every genre. I call country singers' names. Mm -hmm. Them have the music. Yes. You know? So. Them no, at no time that no come out of the no. back of them oh, head. Yeah. You understand me? Them, them have so much respect for them music and, and, and where them music has said that that no leave them. Mm. So they just take out, show them boy, they're all boy, aren't you?
So man, I tell us them no know some of my man them. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's bad. Wow, the best for me ever here. I I remember um I remember real rock from real this rock. little boy. Um, Real Rock and Sata Masagana, Sata. I think, was the most recorded Jamaica rhythm. Then Sata dropped out of the race. Uh. Because Sata is a very unique track. And um, people had to think when using a track. Oh, they're like manage that. it, right. Yeah. And that's why Sizzler was so good, because he. Conquer. He did that track well, him on Cable Town. But after that, the Punani and the Slang thing became tracks of the world. You yes. know? <laughs> and I was saying, yes, yes, yes. And then, as I said before, Sly made that Murder She Wrote. Murder really She Wrote. Mm -hmm. Lives on. Yeah, it didn't have any. Not even be a step on it. It's just a guitar. It's a drums, guitar. You know? Yeah. So mm -hmm. that that is to me one of the greatest achievements rhythm wise. Yes. How many children Sir Fraser? Me? Yeah. Yeah, three youth. Three youth. Yeah. 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 Three big. Big youth them now. Well, two big and one little. What do you mean one little? Me have a little daughter about so. <laughs> I'm going to for you. Yeah? Yeah. I say I go to Sir Fraser. I'm mean, not going to know you. Yeah, I'm going to know you. Sir Fraser married? Um, legally? Yeah, but legally, but. Oh, okay, yeah. but. Mm, I understand what you're saying, man. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Bigger boss. History school will come. History yeah, lesson. Man, we have enough history still. Yeah. Know yourself. Appreciate Anytime. the reason. Appreciate the reason. Next time, I hope you walk with the socks. Yeah. Can't do something for people there. Eh? Yeah, right. I met the people in here. Yeah, man, we're going to line it up, man. We're going to line it up. See? For the youngsters out there, the young instrumentalists who aspire. We have for the for young them. instrumentalists, just play your hand, practice your hand. Don't be afraid. afraid of, don't be afraid of anything. You can achieve anything, anytime. And, and you are. Please just listen and, and practice and be professional, you know? Mm. Makes sense. For the people out there who want to get in touch with Sir Fraser, whether it is to build something, for co-writing something, so how do they go about reaching out to you? Um, Jutebox. Mm. Jutebox is who manages. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so they are what, on Instagram? Yeah, they're, they're on Instagram and thing. I'm not a... Very social, social media, social media right. man. So, so, so jukebox is there. Jukebox. Yeah. So they find it through jukebox. Yes. Mm. Sir Fraser, great man. Bless. Living legend. <laughs> we appreciate. Yeah, man. The reason. I so you need to go Michael too? Yes, man. Oh. Which year you go Michael? We go 05. 05. Yes. Left 08. Okay. My command that's sitting over there, so too. Yeah? Yeah, man. She go farm right now, one place. She go what? <laughs> she go farm. She, she went to Kies. Oh, me know yeah, Kies yeah, to man, a good but, place that to do. Yeah, man, a but, Portland place uh, that. <laughs> but a Michael would think there, you know? Michael would yeah, think there. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, do it yeah, with that might, you know? Yeah, yes, me and me and a big Michael, man. Yeah, and she, them just an hour, too. Yes? Yeah. Mm. She are 80 years old now, them just an hour. You know, so. Them, them keep some big micro thing. Okay, thing cool, there cool, there. cool. Me the drop it. Everything yeah, yeah, was very true. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Did something for it. Yeah, and mm. thing. But but she was an old also, and and you know well she, she um she took, as usual you know remember she the family come from Clarendon, so she took back all the educational skills down at Clarendon. Clarendon. Mm, so she nice. did teach a veer and. The last school she taught was um, down a uh, uh, wet name. Is that a Clarendon? Yeah, man, you're me up in there. Them be? No, man. 
The big school. Glenmuir. Glenmuir. Okay. Yeah, man. She thought that Glenmuir. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, man. So, I just had a way that. <laughs> Great, man. Yeah. Legend. Big up yourself again. Love, and man. Take care. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah? man. It's a joy, man. It's an honor. Teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them. Right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!